hello, hello, hello. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning. Wherever you are, whichever time zone you are, welcome to my weekly Wednesday live once again. My name is Juha Rolingas, your humble servant on a mission from the gods, from the goddesses of fretted instruments. Yeah, it is 9 p.m. here in Finland on November 30th in the year 2022. It's been a while again. Let me know who is there. Greg, hello. Mibu, nice to see you here too. Poo Ninja. Ulenius. Keep them coming, your your messages. Yeah, as you noticed, I haven't had a chance to do these broadcasts regularly lately. And I can see, <clears throat> and I can admit honestly, I can see from my crystal ball that the situation isn't likely going to change any time in the foreseeable future any better. But I'll do my best. I'll do my best. And, um, and I thank you for gathering to watch, to listen to the podcasts whenever they happen. More names popping up. Hannu, hey, Tuomas, Richard, Exnut Molekyli, hello. We have a first comment, first question. Ullen is asking, wait a minute, Ebony doesn't grow in Finland. <laughs> That's right, Alexi, hey. All right, keep him coming. Thank you for gathering to watch and listen to these podcasts means a lot means a lot even if i'm not so regular these days whenever this happens i'm i'm so grateful to have you guys around okay let's dive in ebony that's what we're going to talk about yeah historically speaking ebony it used to be available only to master craftsmen Maybe because of the great expense or the extraordinary nature, the, the superior hardness or the, or the jet black color of the material, whatever, whatever the reasons. The, the use of ebony was very limited centuries ago. It is, it is a tree that grows in the dry and intermediate zones in, in Western Africa, in Malaysia, in Sri Lanka, Southern India, Indonesia. And... Um, yeah, ebony wood has been used in cabinet work, in, in decorative items, crucifixes, and obviously in a wide array of, of musical instruments. And, and ebony wood has often been the topic of, of myths and legends as well. It has been used to repel evil spirits in some cultures. I read from somewhere that drink glasses have been made from ebony wood to protect the user from being poisoned. <sighs> Well, why is ebony then so highly valued in the world of musical instruments? Well, as much as there are myths and legends related to musical instruments, the reality is that most of the time the uh, traditional materials used for certain parts in musical instruments has, has a sort of an evolutionary kind of like a quote-unquote natural selection type of background to it, to a certain extent. Materials that make sense to specific parts. Materials with features that suit to a certain task. An, an obvious example regarding ebony wood would be a violin. You have this instrument where, where you're rubbing your fingers to the fingerboard all the time to take out those notes, so, you know. So, so you need a, a material that would not wear down. And ebony is the hardest. It's the densest. It can take a lot of rubbing and still doesn't wear down. 
So it's just the perfect material for the fingerboard of a, of a bowed instrument without frets. A guitar, on the other, other hand, has frets. And it is um, fair to say that ebony is not necessary to make a great guitar. You think of a you know desirable correct characteristics in a guitar fretboard. Um, well, it's it's a material where the frets will hold extremely well and stay exactly the way you put them there, so nothing would move. For the longevity of the of the instrument, you you want the wood to be stable, obviously, and rigid. Why rigid? Well. Responsiveness in a guitar is a great thing, but it's also a characteristic that needs to be controlled, especially in the case of the guitar neck. As a guitar maker, you don't want the neck to uh, to vibrate too much, um, or especially if there are noticeable peak resonance frequencies that make the neck vibrate more than on other frequencies. You'll end up having these nasty dead spots with very short sustain because the the peak resonance uh, peak resonance frequencies eat away the energy from the strings when the neck vibrates too much. And in this regard, ebony, ebony is one of the best materials. Notice, one of the best materials to stabilize the neck vibration. Yes, there are other possibilities on behalf of using ebony as the fretboard and the guitar, but, but ebony has held its place as one of those desired materials that will last for generations of play. And I haven't yet even mentioned characteristics such as the sound, the tone, the effect of ebony fretboard to the tone or, or playability. And that's because those, those features, those characteristics are either more debatable or simply they're matters of taste. You can like the feel of an ebony fretboard, the smoothness of it, but not everybody likes it. So you can debate to no end. The same goes with the sound. A matter of taste. So I'll leave it to that. I'll leave it to that. But there is one more perspective, one more characteristic of the ebony wood I haven't mentioned yet. Um, and this brings me to the story I want to share with you. Yeah. It brings me to the story. Mark, Stefan, welcome. Glad to have you here. Ninja says, Oh, how my cheap Fender acoustic resonates around 440 hertz, making a stand out no, ma stand out no matter what I play. Lower tunings help. That's, yeah, that's one way to do it. There would be other ways to try to tweak that resonance elsewhere. Maybe um, do something with the bracing or whatever. I'm not so experienced with acoustic guitars, but there are people who, who are, who know that stuff. Anyways, I'm sure many of you recognized the episode title, didn't you? Songs from the Wood. Songs from the Wood. Where is that from? Um, yeah. One of those big classics albums by Jethro Tulls. Remember the back cover of the album? I'm showing you the back cover right now. To those who are listening to this podcast, um, only the audio. Um, in the back cover of, uh, of the Jethro Tull album, Songs from the Wood, there's a tree stump with a turntable... Um, arm mounted to it so as if the stump would be a vinyl uh, um, vinyl record and we would be listening to the song that tree stump is singing to us well well that tree stump is not ebony it's not made of ebony in this cover but Mm. 
Mibu says, love this album. I love this album too. But I knew you would and you knew I would because we're soulmates. We know that stuff of each other. Um, yeah, it, the tree stump in the cover, in the back cover of the Songs from the Wood album by Jethro Tull, it's not Ebony, but if it would be, and if we could hear the song that Ebony tree stump would sing, I think the song would be in minor key. And you're about to find out why. Yeah, first a bit of background. Eleven years ago, Bob Taylor became involved, Bob Taylor of Taylor Guitars, became involved in a sawmill that cuts ebony in Cameroon, Africa. Eleven years ago. He was at that time considering to buy this sawmill called the Krellicam Ebony Sawmill. Krellicam Ebony Sawmill together with Vidal de Teresa and Luisa Wilshire. Um, these two fine people who have a company called Medinter that sells wood to guitar factories to luthiers like myself. Well, um, they visited this sawmill, the Krellicam sawmill, several times um, prior to the purchase. And during the visits, Back in 2010, 2011, they started to understand in more depth how the ebony business worked. To a point where they realized that they, there were these serial ethical issues in the way the business was conducted, involved um, involving corruption, like paying under the table and whatnot. So it kind of got to the point where Bob Taylor and Vidal de Teresa felt maybe Maybe the whole idea to buy this sawmill was a mistake. Maybe they just should, you know, abandon ship and pull out, forget about it. But that that spiraled into another ethical dilemma. See, before before they set their foot to Cameroon, to to Africa, to to see this uh, sawmill, before the whole episode happened, they didn't know how the business worked. And yet, obviously, they kept buying ebony. Medinter to sell to guitar factories and to luthiers, and Taylor buying and putting it into their guitars. We buying from Medinter or other uh, wood suppliers, without knowing the background, putting it into our guitars. But now they knew. Now Bob Taylor and uh, Vidal de Teresa, they knew. Now they knew how the ebony business worked. Um, and in the very last conversation leading to the final decision whether to buy or not, Bob told Vid Vidal that, you know, if they would pull out now, knowing so much, they would have to agree to not buy and not use ebony ever again. It would just not be right. And on the other hand, if they would decide to buy, they would have to accept and surrender to the fact that they knew too much to close their eyes to what's going on, what's been going on, how the business is conducted there in the Congo base, Cameroon, with the business of selling ebony. You know, they would have to agree to start changing the culture so that it follows the rules both both ethic, in ethical sense and in legal sense. And not only by the rules of Cameroon, but the, but the rules of United States, the ethical rules that kind of make sense to us, to the, that's quote unquote, the Western world. And so the decision was made and Taylor and Medinter became um, the owners of this sawmill back in 2011. Okay, well, that's all good stuff, right? Yes, it's a good thing. They started changing the culture. But still, that was just the background. And now comes the part of the story I wanted to share with you. We go back to Cameroon. St 
still in in the year 2011 in September Bob Taylor was about to take over as a part owner of the Ebony Sawmill at the time and he sat down with the subcontractors that go to the forest to actually cut, cut down the trees for them so Bob wanted to ask the subcontractors how things were going and and they said it's not going so well it's going in fact pretty poorly that they have to work too hard for the money they make that the, the ebony trees they they used to be by the road back in the day but now all these years later they have to go deeper and deeper into the forest maybe you know walk 10 kilometers from the roads into the forest find the trees cut them down chop them into small enough blocks they can carry you know on their backs out of the forest because you you couldn't go into the forests with big big machines that that was not the so things were not all bad right so they went into the forest they found a tree they cut it into little blocks they carried it to the to to the back to the car but it, it was really hard work and Bob, Bob when um, interviewing the subcontractors um, acknowledged this and then the sub subcontractors continued that the money they made that, that there was hardly enough to carry their uh, to to cover their costs and um, and in addition to that there's no use for the B grade wood by B grade they refer to ebony with color in it gray or cloudy or this vanilla streaks or whatnot so you know because people wanted black ebony the guitar factories wanted black yeah we 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 know it people want black ebony we want black ebony because ebony is supposed to be black right so Bob asked why why there's no use for the B grade and and the subcontractors felt the sawmill didn't pay enough for it they paid only only one-fifth of what they paid for the a grade and that one-fifth didn't cover the costs but was just as much work as the a grade so they didn't it didn't make sense for them to 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 use it to bring it well, uh, so what do you mean no use what do you mean don't bring it Bob asked what happens to it and the subcontractor continued explaining that since it's so low value they don't bring it out bring it into the sawmill they don't bring it to the factory if they did they just lose money right okay that's fair enough they they couldn't they couldn't do that so so Bob continued so so how can you tell in the forest what is what you know what is what is a grade and what is B grade And so the subcontractor continued um, well we have to cut down the tree with the with the chainsaw and then we look at the stump and see streaks of color in it you know if we see streaks of color in it we don't take it right so you just so you just leave it there is that what you're doing Bob asked you just cut down trees until you find the black one that we our customers want Yes, that's the way it works, they told. And how many trees do you need to cut to find a black one? Well, about 10 trees. So, wait, so on average, one out of 10 ebony trees is black. The kind that the guitar industry wants and the rest were left to rot to the forest now this piece of information you know with the addition that this practice has been the common culture for God knows how many years, how many decades, maybe centuries. That is just, that is just beyond sad. And for what reason? Because 
quote unquote ebony is supposed to be black or the tradition tradition tells ebony is black or the best a grade ebony is black or you know of, or if if ebony has color streaks to it there's something wrong it's b grade it's of no value it's of lesser value well the truth of the forest has turned out to be that only some occasional ebony trees are black while my, while most of the trees are not that's the truth that's the truth and 90% of the cut down trees of way 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 back in history has been left to the forest to rot and today ebony is one of the endangered species <clears throat> okay back to what happened then in September 2011 So Bob Taylor told the subcontractors of the sawmill that from that day, whatever day it was in September 2011, from that day on, the color of the wood would not make a difference. The subcontractors would be paid the A-grade price for the wood regardless of the color. Um, meaning... As Bob also told, um, when these subcontractors would go to get a load, a truck full of ebony from the forest, it's about 60 ton truck. 60 tons means on average about two trees cut down. So before they had to cut 20 trees to get those two trees chopped into blocks, brought back to the truck hauled to the factory and from now on they would only need to cut two trees 90% less trees from then on <clears throat> well it's a big big project to tell the world of musical instrument uh, industry essentially that you know, we all thought ebony is mostly black and sometimes not quite, but the truth is that ebony is black only sometimes and mostly it is not. And we have to accept that and live with that, okay? That's the message to kind of convey to everybody. An ongoing project started in 2011 to educate everybody. The other sawmills, this is just one sawmill, you know, educate the other sawmills, educate the wood suppliers, the guitar factories, the luthiers, and finally, you guys, the players. So, it's a big project, and it's it's nowhere near being done and finished. In most people's minds, ebony still continues to be black. So, I urge you guys to click the link in the video description below. Um, not right now. Don't go right now. <laughs> After my stream, you're free to do it. But yeah, there's a, there's a link to the to the Ebony Project website. Um, and dive in. Learn more about how these things work. Learn about those people who go into the forests and and um, learn, read the stories. Watch those videos. That's there. You're gonna learn many interesting things. About what's what such a sad story and who can you blame the subcontractors no not really the sawmill the wood suppliers the dealers the the, the musical industry instrument industry as a whole <clears throat> 
Remember the story that I've told you before where the, where the little daughter in the family asks her mom, kind of puzzled, you know, why, why the mom cuts off a chunk of the Christmas ham before putting it into the oven? Why does she just every Christmas cut that one piece off and put the rest to the oven? And, and the mom is like, oh, I, I, I think this is the way it's supposed to be done. You know, this is how my mom did it. It's the tra tradition. And the daughter isn't quite happy with the answer. So she asked the grandma the same thing. And, and the grandma's like, oh, we had so small oven back then that the ham wouldn't fit in otherwise. There you go. A family tradition was born or about to be born, but the daughter cut it off. Yeah, oftentimes the traditions we have, they, they can be so ridiculous. You know, the way we've thought about Ebony is, is, is one just such tradition, you know. Who knows where the idea of Ebony is black originates from, you know. In any case, the bottom line is that Ebony is not black. Occasionally it can be, but most of the times it isn't. Yeah, and believe me, we're a long way from the culture having truly changed and accepted this shift. But it has begun and it has been already going on for 10 years. You know, as, as one of my dear friends always reminds me, you know, encourage, encourages me at my moments of despair. So here goes my warmest regards and, and a sincere thank you for your hard work, Bob Taylor, to... to, to Vidal de Teresa and to Louisa Wilshire and to your teams working hard with you. Um, just in case you guys would have those moments of despair sometimes too. Yes, you, you are dealing with a huge undertaking in your attempt to change the world a better place. But remember that this project, the Ebony Project, it has never ever bef before been as far as it is right now. You've progressed, you have progressed the furthest ever in history so far. <laughs> That's right. So, you know, it's, it's a good thing to remember. It's a comforting thing, comforting way to think about it. Richard asks, was the ebony on my Eddie Ojeda Hellcat source from the new method of harvesting? Yes, well, all our ebony has been uh, cut from such way of harvesting since about 10 years ago. Or maybe maybe even, uh, let's say, FSC certified wood. Yeah, that even longer. But um, but yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a long change. It's a slow change. But yeah, it's, it's been going on for a long time. So, and remember, I'm not telling this story to uh, make you guys who own guitars with ebony fretboard or you know with the, with the history of things. I'm not here to you know put guilt on anybody on how how things were. It's just that um, this story. Um, you know, this story I just shared with you, it, it has been, in fact, available to read on our website already for quite a while. It's there. Um, you go to the specifications, and then there are these articles about this wood species and things, and, and, and one of them is the ebony, and, and it's there. Um, and I put it there for a couple of reasons. First of all, awareness of these things in general, it's obviously important. I mean, it's it's difficult because... You know, if you think of it, these guys, Bob Taylor, Vidal de Teresa, and, uh, you know, they, uh, they could have closed their eyes, you know, technically speaking. They could have just pulled out, not buy the, the sawmill and just leave it be as it was, or buy it and just 
don't go to the forest. I don't, I don't need to know how things are working. They could have done that. But bringing these things into awareness of, of like on wider perspective, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult. And, and and yeah, that's probably why why the the information doesn't spread so much because there's something awkward in having to kind of admit of being somehow part of it, you know. Yeah, and. Um, Richard asks a question. So does the industry now dye the ebony black if it has streaks, streaks or leave it as it is? I think it's moving to good di direction. I think there's been for, for a long time the, the kind of tendency that, uh, that some of that B-grade streaked ebony has been in fact brought out from the forests and maybe used as in, in cheaper instruments and then dyed black or whatever things like that but um, but I think it's more more about the shift that we kind of understand that hey it's just the color it's not the other desirable features of this wood that go with the color um, yeah. Yeah. Awareness is 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 difficult. With knowledge comes responsibility, you know, and that's you know, hats off and highest accolades for accolades. How do you say that? For for Bob Taylor, for for their whole teams um without deterioration to, to not choose to close their eyes, but to kind of do what they can, do do the best they can. And, you know, awareness of this whole story of Ebony, back when I heard it first time, a long time ago, it made me go through this ethical thought process of, you know, whether we want to offer Ebony as an option to our guitars in the future at all. And at that point, my conclusion was much in line with what Bob Taylor has decided to do. You have to watch those videos from that Ebony Project um, website. Again, the description is in the uh, in the in the video link below. If you're listening to the to the audio podcast, I guess you need to go to YouTube to find this video, find it in the description or just put it to Google, you know, Taylor Ebony Project or Madinter Ebony Project, whatever. I'm sure you'll find it. It's going to be there. Those videos have been watched a lot, but they should be watched a lot more. They've been probably watched hundreds of thousands of times, but they should be watched millions of times. Okay, so go watch them and share them. Um, Yes, I can, in my very small part, I can support a better culture that is sustain, more sustainable, doesn't exploit, hopefully doesn't exploit. What do I know? I've never been to Cameroon. I'm in the mercy of, of believing people and believing the systems that are built on these things. You know, But I can try to do my best. I can try to support a better culture that hopefully benefits the people in Cameroon better and... Um, I can do what I can to further educate people about the facts. Because awareness of what what is what, it helps you also to make better choices for yourself, I hope. And, uh, you know, secondly, for, for, for me, as a luthier, as a consequence of my choice to keep on offering sustainably harvested ebony, in my instrument, you know, in all its aesthetic variety, um, because there is the black. I mean, the the black variation is there, or the also the nearly black that has only very little something, and and it's it's a really a, a spectrum. It's not like it's it's either black or 
something totally else. It's it's a, it's a spectrum of different kinds of things. So yeah, I made a decision to continue offering this fine uh, tone wood as a fretboard option in our guitars. So obviously, I want to give as much information as I can so people know why there is this aesthetic variety or more specifically that the aesthetic variety is not a grading system. What used to be, somebody commented there that the B grade is now exotic ebony and it's charged more. Yes, that's right. Somebody calls it exotic ebony, somebody calls it marbled ebony or striped ebony or golden ebony or whatever. There are different kinds of names to call it now and, and it's still a shift and it's kind of all over the place depending on where you look but but it's changing and and the, and the price of ebony is going up and one of the reasons it's going one of the main reasons it's going up is because uh, well, it's it's been paid better to the to the source to the to the countries where it's harvested from and another very 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 maybe maybe the most important outcome of this this whole ordeal, this whole episode, this sad story is that, you know, to get a truckload, to get 60 tons of ebony out from Cameroon, from the, the forest, you know, the subcontractors who walk into the forest, they don't need to cut down any more 20 trees to get that 60 ton. They need to cut only two trees, only, you know, um, to get the same amount because they get paid regardless of the color of the wood. So yeah, you know, the color is not a grading system anymore. Or it is to some, to many maybe, but it should not be. It should not be. The black ebony is not better. The striped ebony, the marbled ebony is not B grade. They're just different and it's okay. <sighs> yeah. Great comments there, you guys. I, I don't have quite time to to dive into those so much, but Write them down. I will, I will, at the very least, at the end of the show, when we're done, I, I will definitely read every single one of your comments that you've written. Maybe let's see if we have a moment to bring some of those up, up to the screen. Yeah, and the third reason I wanted to put this uh, article on our website already a while ago, this is, and, and this is kind of a cool thing. Um, kind of a recent recent development for us um, even if it borderlines product placement and and marketing and my apologies for that because <laughs> we we got very recently done a big user interface update to our configurator thingy you know the, the, the guitar creator application um, a little change I've, 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 I've wanted to or addition I wanted to the creator for years and years but um, now we have it Feels like a little thing, but it since it wasn't included there in the beginning, it it, it was uh, surprisingly difficult to add, or the threshold to add, or the bar to kind of go there and make that change that allows us to put it there. Uh, wasn't so easy. wasn't as easy as I would have hoped. But anyway, so let's let's look at this little clip. Let me show you. Can you still hear me? Yeah, for a moment I think I was muted. Now I'm not. Yeah, so yeah, one of the additions I wanted to addition uh, to add to the creator for years is this. Now it's there, so you can see. Finally, we have also the not black ebony, the marbled ebony, as we have chosen to call it, featured in the guitar creator. Too. There it is. Now it can be chosen there. 
just remember that when you, if you order a guitar from us, with uh, with uh, and you choose not to have it as black or let's say black or nearly black or blackish, uh, that you want something more colorful, um, called then marbled uh, ebony. Remember that it, it won't look exactly like that sample on the Guitar Creator. Ideally, you could choose the actual piece from my inventory in the Guitar Creator, but that would have been way too challenging for us to do. So instead, you'll you'll get to handpick the actual fretboard from the photos of our in inventory. Yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, as you can see, I, got, I have here some kind of pretty extreme samples. So these are all different. They, they're so different. Like... And the, and the three three fretboards I took, they're actually they're all kind of on the on the kind of kind of extreme extreme um, end of it because they can be so different kinds. They don't need to be quite this colorful. They can be darker and and, and more subtle coloring or whatever. Like I tried to explain earlier, but for now, I don't have a way to to show you everything. I think you can you can see much 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 more when you look into the the, the Ebony Project website and uh, you know the Taylor's effort on they put to this. So Taylor has been Bob Taylor and the the whole team and and Vidal and Teresa they've done a really great job. With that. Um, yeah, the, the the guitar creator application it, it works now on 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 the most common computer web browsers and you can download it to your mobile devices from the Apple App Store or uh, now even uh, really uh, this latest user interface also for 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 your Android device from Google Play and and obviously all feedback regarding this software this application is most welcome. The next step with the app development is to add the, the Valbucker Mark II to the existing guitars in the in the app. So you can choose that as an option. And, and after that, we'll be adding the missing models, including the basses. I know there's so many who have been asking. Patience, though. You know, software development for a small, small company like us, I can tell it's... Hmm, it's... Um, how can I tell? It, it's a path... It's a path w filled with challenges, uh, to say the least. But we'll keep doing our best. <sighs> so, in case you did not know the whole story about Ebony, well, you still don't know. I still don't know the whole story. <laughs> but now you know a little bit more, a little bit more than scratch on the surface. And, and if you go down to educate yourself on the Ebony Project website, you will learn tons more. It's very, very interesting. And at the same time, it's sad, but things are heading to good direction. And that's that's great. As said, awareness, as hard as it is, as it is, as hard as it is to talk about difficult things, awareness in the end, is it is, transparency is a good thing. It helps us all to make better choices. Right. Okay, that was very intense. It is 9.45 p.m. in Finland. And uh, I think I'm more or less done for today. And because it isn't later than it is, I'm going to bring out a couple of things. What did I see somewhere? Nibu says, an interesting thing, the wood loses its soul by cutting down, but an instrument, it borrows the soul of the player. That's a beautiful way of putting it. Yeah.
bear with me, I'm just reading through, reading through your comments. How do these work? Because they're so, why are these things so, so, I, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm messing up with it somehow. Okay. Yeah. No, I can't seemingly make it kind of. Okay, being human carries plenty of guilt. Filthy, greedy little creatures they can be, but capable of unbounded love, joy, and compassion. Yes, the paradox of Homo sapiens. Wow. Kingsley says, Aesthetic variety is a good thing. I think so too. I think so too. Can I show you one guitar made with, uh, with, with whatever you want to call it, marbled ebony? Let's just call it ebony, okay? It's all ebony. You want me to show you one uh, guitar? That is one beautiful fretboard right there, I think. This is ebony as well. Not B-grade ebony, people. Quite the contrary to that. Yeah. There's a good question there. How is the hardness and tonal quality of wild looking ebony compared to black ebony? That's the thing, it's the same. It's the same, it's just the color. The feel, the sound, the, the hardness, the, the weight, the density, the rigidity, stability, it's the same. Same challenges as all ebony has. I mean, ebony is very challenging because it needs to drive for a long time until you can make it into an instrument. Otherwise, it's not stable. So you have to have it for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, Kingsley says, for the purpose of being made into guitar or fretboard, I would think hardness, density, tap tone should be more important than color or figure, but so many guitar players here with us. Well, yeah, well, it, yeah, and it is, it is really, I mean, traditions, they are stuck very hard, you know. We're a conservative bunch. We, we, uh, instrument makers, the, the whole industry, the you know, things aren't so apt to change. So easily apt to change. Yeah. Yeah. For totally black look, there are some of those composite options. Yeah, there are. And this is something that I think we've talked about these things, the the uh, substitutes, the, the alternative, the man-made materials, the composite materials. In another video a long time ago, and um, this is an interesting development, and let's hope it continues uh, evolving and and the development goes on. Um, oftentimes, the man-made materials are. Let's say if you think of plastic materials, if you think of um, a lot of man-made uh, composite materials, they aren't exactly known for longevity to, to, to last over, you know, from generation to the next. 
And some of these composites that are now being offered for guitar makers, they are, they are, it's materials that have existed for some years. There's some research and development, some study behind whether, how they, how they age. But such a kind of like a, a important part of the construction of the instrument as the fretboard if you take the example of violin or classical guitar in the same way an electric guitar, it's an instrument. You, you, you don't expect the instrument to have a lifespan of 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. You expect the musical, the valuable musical instrument to have a, a lifespan. You pass it, you know. There's a saying that of a, of a, of a valuable musical instrument, you know, that you, you in fact, you don't own the instrument you order you just take care of it you know just take look after it for your lifetime and then you pass it to the next and this is the this is the idea oftentimes with um, with comp that makes it a little bit difficult with composite materials that there is no way of knowing how they will be in 10 years in 10, 20 years so. and in that way you could also tell that the the, the curse of the tradition, you know, the conflict, the tradition versus sustainability has caused to the ebony wood, for example. Um, it's paradoxical because in some ways the, the, the tradition is that you kind of, that's why you rely on the tradition also, because you know that, hey, they made musical instruments out of this wood species 300 years ago, and they st they're still playable, they're still good. It's safe for me to make to put it into my guitar, and I can tell that it will be good, you know. Yeah. Kingsley says those are lovely, referring to the um, to the marbled uh, ebony fretboards, I think. Uh, Woody Pfeiffer is building me a guitar and he offered me some similarly lovely figured ebony fretboard planks. There you go. Like I told you, the luthiers, the, 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 the word is, the word is out. It's, it's out and it's, it's moving on and it's, it's good. <laughs> Poonings says, it's good to hear your soothing voice again, imparting wisdom as always. Thank you. Thank you, Puninja. Yeah, thank you. I didn't know my voice was so soothing, but <laughs> thank you. Excellent molecule says, I think striped ebony is beautiful, but to be honest, before I got interested in guitar building, I had no idea it even existed. Well, so you can tell. Um, you know, Bob Taylor didn't know ten more than ten years ago. Okay, let's let's. Okay, we guitar makers, guitar industry, guitar factories. We it's it's not entirely true to say we didn't know that colorful ebony exists. No, that's not right. I knew, we knew, we knew that ebony, or let's say what we knew, the way we thought world was that, you know. The majority of ebony that exists is black. Sometimes it has color in it. That's what we thought. And then it's easy to kind of leave it to that because sometimes it has color to it and sometimes we would use those a little bit colorful pieces. But at that time, I did not know of this kind of ebony. I did not know of this kind of ebony. I had never ever seen something like that. Ten years ago, never seen ebony like this. And now we know why. It was left to the forest. As sad as it is. Yeah. So, excellent molecule, you don't blame yourself, you didn't know. We can't change the past, 
but awareness can change the future and that's where we are we're, we're in the middle of this shift um, yeah okay another another comment about uh, composites Alex, you would like to hear my take on those synthetic options like rich light. Are they good options to replace pitch black ebony? Well, with the with the um, certain de degree of of uh, being careful, um, yes, why not? I mean, th there's just that thing with rich light with with these other uh, materials that we we don't. I don't know. We we don't know the the, the how those materials will will be over time, over long periods of time. So we just don't know, because many many man-made materials that have um, different kind of plastic components in it, and as far as I'm aware, rich light has also some kind of uh, resins and some kind of um, parts. Uh, ingredients in it that it's it's maybe difficult to say how it will will it corrode will it decompose um, over time like many plastics do over decompose they, they just don't stay together they become brittle fragile over time and so on so yeah yeah it would be so great if if there would be substitute materials that would be just you know without any question marks that would would just work it would be so great wouldn't it but it's not that simple and well this stuff along with basically any um organic growing tree kind of material it is sort of like a natural composite material that grows in the in the or laminated com composite <laughs> uh, made by the nature and and the nature does it very well have to have to give the credit for that this stuff doesn't go bad over 300 years or 500 years or whatever if it's kept dry um, but a lot of man-made materials aren't, aren't like that. But I mean, the world is going, uh, the world is changing all the time, and 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 there comes new materials, and all the times from left and right something new pops up. And I would say that it is, uh, in the in the very least, as a comment uh, about these com composite materials, um, I, I'm a little bit reserved to putting it these composite materials at this point of time to my guitars until I see um, really credible um, study, scientific study on how these materials will will take time. Uh, because the time is really the, the ultimate judge of whether a material is good or not. And um, so I, I have a little bit reservation, but I would say that it's great. It's 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 super wonderful that these uh, materials are are being developed, and and I would hope that because you know in the world millions of millions of it, uh, guitars are being manufactured every year, millions and millions, and and the vast majority of those instru instruments are are cheap instruments, and I believe that that. Uh, Especially in the cheaper, in the beginner instruments, in the in the that category of instruments, these uh, composites and and these materials, they they should provide a very very um, potential option to change from using rosewood to change from using basically any kind of these natural and taking pressure off from using that material so much. Because as we've talked in some other episodes about the about the prime issue, the the, the, the essential problem of 
our species is that we are so many and we are consuming so much of the resources of this planet and the and the ultimate sustainable way is to consume less as a whole of the valuable resources um, yeah so taking pressure off from and, and then maybe maybe um, it would give a possibility that you know I will hopefully not be one of the last generations of guitar makers who can and has the opportunity to make fine musical instruments using these uh, wonderful materials that that create such inspiring tools for musicians yeah um. right what else there's so much comments guys Kingsley says, longevity. One of my favorite things about our friend Ken Parker, regards to Ken, miss you. Would love to see you again after many years of not being able to see face to face any guitar shows anywhere. Yes, uh, one of my favorite things about our friend Ken Parker is that he always takes into consideration that the instrument have uh, will have a lifespan of centuries not a decade or three exactly this is this is the point I made earlier and this is yeah yeah very much comments but I gotta I, I, I can't just sorry sorry I can't yeah I can't. There's so much comments. I'm very grateful, but I just can't dive into it all right now. I'll take the very last comment again about a composite. Rich light is paper and resin. Rock light is not paper, but wood based. I don't know exactly what it is. Rock light, I think it has uh, also some sort of a resin component in it. And, and when you when you mention resin, that's when you kind of should start thinking that, okay, that's the part that will will or will not or or possibly will decompose over it over time yeah you always have some material some resin some materials to bind whatever particles it is or or, or fibers it is that you're trying to bind together in 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 wood in ebony, in, in other kinds of wood, it's the lignins, it's the it's the natural resins that are are binding the wood fibers together. But as wise and smart and, and, and advanced human being is, we haven't yet, as far as I am aware, we haven't been able to make synthetic wood that would um, been anywhere near the characteristical features of these fine wood species that mm. are used, for example, for musical instruments. Or even construction wood or anything. It's, it's, um, it's hard to replace these materials often times. Okay. I can see that I'm... I'm <laughs> I'm lost for words and I'm also tired. It is 10 p.m. past 10 p.m. now. And for now, it is time to say goodnight. Next Wednesday, I will do another show. I will do the last episode for this year. Next Wednesday, we'll be looking into the making. We'll be listening to the sound of a very special guitar called uh, Eon Monarch. Monarch as the monarch butterfly. I won't say more for now. Maybe you may have may have seen some pictures on on our social media. So some of you may may know what it's about. But 
we have some really nice uh, clips, uh, demo clips recorded for us by Antti Paranko with the Eon Monarch guitar. And um, we're going to talk, we're talking about that. Won't say no more for now. So we'll, we'll get back to it next week. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. For, for being so active with your comments. And um, let's remember awareness is a good thing. We can't change the past, but the future that is ours, okay? Take care of your loved ones. Be well. Stay safe. Peace, love, and good music. Good night. <laughs>